Welcome back, Hashtag Third Hour. Today, it's a story that's been told time and time again. Victor Hugo's classic Les Miserables. From the stage to the big screen, the tale of Jean Valjean, an escaped convict trying to evade the law and rebuild his life. Well, now there's a new take on it. David Oyelowo plays the obsessive Inspector Javert, who has just arrested Fantine, played by Lily Collins, when Jean Valjean comes to her defense. This is an outrage that cannot be tolerated. A respectable property-earning citizen attacked by a common prostitute. Take this whore to the cells. Yes, sir. You've got six months. Six months? But what about my child? That's no concern of mine. Take her away. Please, Monsieur Chabert. I was not always like this. I was a good girl. Take her away. She stinks of degradation. One moment. Monsieur Le Maire. Monsieur Le Maire. Guys <laughs> are playing though. <laughs> David and Lillian join us now. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, first things first. I guess our viewers had a chance to see. This is not a musical. No. This no. is based very closely to the novel. But a lot of people at first thought thought it would be when they first heard about it. A lot of people didn't even realize that the musical was based on Victor Hugo's mm -hmm. novel. Yeah. Fair enough, uh, fair to, enough. To, to be yeah. true. Uh, so, but this, thankfully, this uh, adaptation is very faithful to the novel, and people now get to see more context with those characters they really love from the musical. Did either of you read the novel? It's 1,500 pages. I didn't finish it, I have to admit, okay? <laughs> I mean, you know how the I, story I, is. I always say, if I had known in school that I would have been one day playing Fontaine, I would have highlighted a lot more. <laughs> I would have really paid attention a lot better, yeah. You read it, didn't you? I did, I did. But, but the great thing about it is, you know, normally as an actor, you're looking for as much information as you can for the character. It's all there, yeah, Hugo. Victor Hugo's book. Is it true, David, that on the set, you were in character the entire time, and that, and that you... <laughs> apparently developed quite the reputation for being unfriendly as a result. <laughs> I didn't realize this till we started I think we're all having this moment of he's not realizing that he was so standoffish, oh, and David oh, uh, and Dominic and I wow. didn't realize that he was more in character. We just thought he didn't want to hang out with us. Oh, oh, yeah. So, until I'm, now? Until press, when Dominic and I were like, you're so fun, and it's like, well, I'm not in character. Oh. So you didn't tell anyone just a heads up? I'm gonna stay. Well, maybe it's a character. known thing. Is it a known thing? It, I didn't so know. It's so second nature to me now. I, I get yeah. completely lost in the character, and I didn't realize I was being so unfriendly. I think but, you should have said something. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think for all future co-stars out there, now you know. Now, yeah. now you've been warned. Yeah. And Lily, you got to film your first death scene. How'd you, On my second day of filming. How'd you How'd you prep for that? Um, I well, luckily the environment was really helpful. It was. Minus 13, it was oh. dirty where we were shooting. I was jet lagged, I was so nervous, I was deathly afraid. Um, and so, I don't know, I just, I Googled symptoms of um, all the things she would have been oh. sick with and I just kind of went with it. And, and it's, you know, I, I honestly am a believer in you just use whatever you're feeling in the environment that you're in, and I and I just channeled it. But it was day two of filming, so we worked my way backwards. How do you decompress after that? I feel like you go home, you want to just shake it off. Because you yeah. can't talk to David. I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pointless. Right, exactly. No, I'm I'm I like to separate, um, and. Uh, yeah, I don't know. The first part of filming was very interesting for me because it was the end of her life. And then when I came back in summer, it was really happy times. So the first part was a little more depressing, mm -hmm. um, but it was all worth it because I just kept using it for the character. And what about for you, playing a villain, especially if you're staying in character? Yeah, I, it was, you know what, I, I grew to love him, uh, which is <laughs> I know a weird thing to say, um, but the, the, the thing that this show afforded me is to understand and empathize with why he was the way he is. When you watch the musical, he's kind of one-dimensional. He just seems obsessed with Jean Valjean and, and destroying him. But we with don't this, know why. You don't know why, but with this, you realize that he was born in prison to criminal mm. parents, uh. hates that side of himself, transposes that onto Jean Valjean, and that's what he's trying to destroy. Mm. He's effectively mm. trying to destroy a part of him himself, which he sees in this other person. Well, thank you guys for coming on. I can't wait to see this. it. Yes. Yeah, you. You're, you're a lot of fun. Like, I, I know. I'm really a nice guy. <laughs> if you want to see him play a villain, it's this Sunday, April 14th on Masterpiece on PBS. Thank you, guys. Thank we'll you. be right back.